If you are a real estate investor or you want to be a real estate investor and you need more funding and money for your deals, regardless of your credit, regardless of your income and regardless of your experience in real estate investing, don't go anywhere because we're getting ready to plug you into the money in just a second. Well, welcome to the show. This is Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor, where we talk about all things real estate investing primarily single family houses, but we also talk about commercial as well. We talk about how to get your deals funded, how to find deals before other real estate investors know they exist, how to sell any home in three days or less and how to actually automate the business. Well, today I've got a special guest here on the show with me. His name is Greg Ulmer and I'm going to introduce Greg to you in just a few seconds. But first I got to tell you what's coming up right around the corner. If you have not registered yet, for the upcoming Real Estate Investing Cash Flow Conference with Jay Connor, then you want to run right on over to the URL website uh, when we finish the show. And I'm going to go ahead and give you that website right now uh, here on the video for those of you that are watching on uh, YouTube. And for those on the audio, here it is www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. So again, Jay Connor, I'm E-R, not O-R, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money podcast. And one thing that we're going to be doing uh, at the live event, I don't know another live event like this. It's a three day event. Um, the first, and we have it here in Moorhead City, Atlantic Beach, North Carolina. And here's why. We actually go out to our actual houses uh, on the bus tour. That's on the first day. And I teach how we found the houses, uh, how we funded them, a lot of them with private money, uh, how we are, uh, the renovation cost and uh, what we're selling it for. Some of the houses we'll go to are completely finished and renovated, uh, beautiful, ready to go into the multiple listing service, or they may already be in the MLS. And so that bus tour is unlike any other bus tour I know. Here's another reason. And that is, I actually have uh, members of my team on the bus tour for you to network with and pick their brains to learn how we do the business. I have my contractors, have our interior designer, Beth Garner. And so the first day is just amazing. The second day I teach three of the four pillars of my uh, real estate investing business. Uh, how we find them, as I said before, other real estate investors, uh, how we fund them using a lot of private money, and then how we sell them in three days or less on the rent to own homes tour program. And then the afternoon of the second day, I've actually got private lenders at the event for you to network with. Uh, we also have a very, very nice uh, reception on the evening of the second day. Then on the third day, it's all about automation. How do we automate this business? So it's right around the corner. It's October 10th, 11th and 12th here in the fall of 2018. And uh, this will sell out quickly. So you want to get on over to the website. So with that, Greg, my friend, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Thank you, Jay. I'm doing excellent. Fantastic. Well, I was hoping Tia could make it uh, with us today, but I know she's busy getting here uh, ready for the Labor Day weekend. And um, so a little bit about you, Greg, uh, to let all of our viewers and, and listeners know, uh, Greg uh, came to my live event um, a few months ago. And uh, wow, he and Tia are, uh, are running out the gate, very successful students, very smart real estate investors. And um, so Greg, let's just go ahead and start in and, uh, and get your background. Um, how much, uh, let's talk about one of your deals that you've done. But before we do that, uh, tell everybody where are you and Tia are located and um, the kinds of deals that you're doing now. Yeah, we're located in Durham, North Carolina, and we're f uh, focusing on single family homes. So we're, um, you know, we look into buy and uh, flip or buy and hold. Excellent. Excellent. And so now both you and Tia still have full time uh, day jobs, right? Definitely. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, tell everybody uh, what your day job is and uh, then tell them what Tia does. Okay, I am a um, IT manager with the state, and um, so I, I manage software development and testing. And Tia is a uh, she is a pharmacist by uh, her degree, and she manages uh, international drug studies. 
Got you, got you. So what's interesting you see here, Greg, and, and I know a lot of the uh, viewers and listeners, um, you know, will learn from this. And that is you are both of y'all have got the day jobs and you're also real estate investing at the same time simultaneously. Right. So um, so let's talk about one of your recent deals that you and Tia have done. Um, uh, so, um, so think of a deal. All right. And have you got one in mind? Yes, I think, I think so. Uh, okay. So the deal, uh, the, it's a single family house, right? Right. Right. All right. So tell us how you found this deal and you got the deal instead of another real estate investor. <laughs> Actually, it kind of fell into our lap. We were, um, we're attending, you know, different conferences. Of course, a real estate investor, you have to stay um, plugged in and learning, always learning. So um, we were talking to a realtor and she had a property that just, it didn't, the deal didn't fall through. So as we were talking to her, um, you know, we said we would be interested. So she, we saw the deal, we saw it, we, we bought it, you know, the same day. So. Awesome. Now, how did you fund that deal? The purchase was funded by a private lender. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, um, so let's see here. Would you say that you would have missed out on that deal if you hadn't had the private money lined up? Definitely. Especially at that time. Yes. All right. Excellent. Well, you know, and you've heard me, you've heard me teach this uh, more than once, Greg, and that is the money comes first. In other words, well, um, well, tell tell the viewers and listeners what that means. What does that mean when we say the money comes first? That means you have so many options when you have money that you can put in a uh, offer or put in a bid for a deal, and you can get it because you can move quickly. Yeah, move quickly. That's one of the big benefits, as you just mentioned, Greg, about the private money mm -hmm. is we can close so much quicker with yes. the private money. And for those of you that are listening or watching the show for the first time, let's be very clear on what or who a private lender is. So first of all, a private lender is not a hard money lender, right? It's not a broker. As you know, most of the time when people hear about private money, what they're really hearing about is hard money or a broker. So just real quick, as you pointed out, Greg, you can close so much quicker. You know, the average interest rate on private money now is 8%. Hard money is around 14%. Hard money has got origination points uh, or, um, or uh, you know, the, uh, the points or the origination fees, I'm trying to say. The average nation now is four points or 4%. Private money has got no points. Hard money has got extension fees. There's no extension fees with private money. We always uh, borrow more than we need to buy it. So we always get a check when we buy our houses. Did you do that on this particular deal, Greg? Did you borrow uh, more than you needed to purchase it? No, we actually uh, used our own funds to do the rehab. So okay. So you didn't need to. Yeah. Yeah. The purchase, we used all private money. And we did okay. Rehab. And you got a hundred percent, right? Oh yeah. 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 So you didn't have to bring any, any money to the closing table. Nope. Not to the closing table. Awesome. Awesome. So again, folks on the upcoming live event, uh, the first, half a day and half of the second day is all about the private money. So back to your deal, Greg. Um, so how much did you pay for the, for the house? The, the sales price was 36,000. So you bought it for 36,000. Right. I can't buy a house for 36,000 in Moorhead city. <laughs> but anyway, um, so how much was the rehab? The rehab was 25,000. 25,000. And what is the, would you say is the after repaired value? After repair value is around, around 80, 85. Okay. So that's, that's a good, I mean, you, you still own it even after the rehab at a very big discount. Right. Yeah. This isn't, this yeah. was not the uh, flip. So this is right. Whole. Right. And just so everybody knows if you didn't have, if, if Greg and Tia didn't have their own funds for the rehab piece, with these numbers, it'd be very, very easy to borrow from the private lender all the rehab money as well, because those numbers work. Right. Excellent. And how much are you renting it out for uh, per month? We rent it for seven ninety five a month. Seven ninety five. Well, you're doing better than the average on the rent cash flow. Yes, that one. <laughs> the 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 rule of thumb is whatever you know um, you've got or whatever the house is uh, what you've got in it. You want to get at least 
1% of that value per month in rental. And you're even, you know, ahead of that. So congratulations on that recent deal, Greg. I'm proud of you, man. Thank you. Thank you. It was a good deal. Yeah, that's awesome. So what's interesting also about this, Greg, is that uh, one lesson or one lesson from the, your story on this particular deal is private money can be used for either uh, uh, fix and flip uh, or it can be used for the pretty house business if you didn't have to do rehab. But in your case, you're using private money for buy and hold. Exactly. exactly. For rental. So that, that is, uh, that's awesome. So again, private money be used for all different kinds of uh, real estate deals. So let's see here. What was it that got you or you and Tia first interested in real estate investing? What drew you to it? I think we're, we're always interested in real estate investing, even with our, our house, our first house, we were, you know, redoing the design of it and everything. So we always had an interest in real estate. And over the years, we, um, you know, we dabbled here and there. And then finally in uh, 2010, we went seriously, you know, part-time constantly since then. So we've been in real estate investing uh, consistently since 2010. Okay. Now, this recent deal you did right there, that's a buy and hold. Are you doing all buy and holds now? Or are you doing buy and hold and, you know, buy and sell or uh, what are y'all focusing on these days? Well, right now, because of the, the, the area that we're in, we're going to start focusing on um, buy and flips or buy and sell. Okay. It. So, because um, there's lots of movement, lots of real estate in this area. So we're going to focus on that. But if uh, a buy and hold comes along, the numbers work, we will do that. There you go. Excellent. So, um, so here, I'm going to shoot you one here from the hip. So here it comes. <laughs> All right. So what would you say is, you know, given yours and Tia's experience, what would you say is one of your all's biggest mistakes or lessons learned from uh, doing deals uh, in the past? Okay. Um, that would probably be with our first property. It was also a, a buy and hold. Um, we were going to save money, um, you know, being kind of cheap, you know, and also inexperienced with real estate. I'm having some skills to do um, do repairs. So we that's what we did. We went down, we did repairs, pull up carpet, paint, strip, uh, you know, drywall. I mean, uh, repair drywall, pull off the uh, wallpaper after wallpaper after wallpaper, layers. And layers. <laughs> <laughs> we it was a lot of work. We went you know many long nights, and we hired subcontractors and you know for some parts of it. But the main thing was that it took so long to do. Um, paying the, the, all the holding cost, it just really cut into the profit of the deal. And so now we're, we're like, okay, it's, it's good to have a good contractor, especially so that, especially since that we're still working, they're able to go and handle the, the business and we can um, operate and talk with the general contractor. So that's the key. Awesome. So it, awesome. It was, a, it was a painful and expensive learning. <laughs> well, you know, I tell people, you know, you're going to pay for your education one way or the other. <laughs> and it's, 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 it's a lot, um, it's a lot less expensive to join hips with somebody that has been doing the business than, you know, what you just said reminds me of this, Greg. I remember some time ago, um, a student at one of my events raised her hand and they said, well, I just love to rehab my own houses. They said, rehabbing my own houses is like, therapy to me. And you know what I said to him? I said, anybody that rehabs their own houses needs therapy. That's oh, what I say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's not the way to go. <laughs> well, that is good advice. Uh, yeah. Uh, sub it out or, or, or work with the uh, general contractor rather. Now you and Tia working in the business together, husband and wife team. Um, what would you, what kind of advice would you give to our viewers and listeners that uh, either, you know, has a significant other or they are married, uh, they're in a relationship and they want to do both, both parties want to be working together in real estate investing. What advice would you give them? Okay. Um, I would say, first of all, realize that you the relationship comes first and that to maintain that relationship, you have to have things in order. So, 
I had to, I take a part of one uh, half of the business and she covers the other half of the business and you have to respect those boundaries. Um, you know, you have the tendency, or at least I do, to, to look and say, oh, well, did you think about this and this and that? Let them, you know, do their part of the business. And as it's just human nature to uh, to want to be involved in and control all aspects. But you, tr you trust your partner. They do a good job. You communicate with one another. We, we have meetings every morning. We talk about what went on, what we plan to do for the day, um, and what we're, what things uh, happened overnight so that we can move forward. So, yeah. Must, so must so share with us, and I know this will vary between, you know, different people, but uh, what, are, what are some of the areas of the business that you handle and what are some areas that Tia handles? Well, Tia handles the acquisitions. So, you know, she runs the foreclosure system and well, she manages the foreclosure system. We have uh, virtual assistants. She manages the foreclosure systems and um, talking with the, the sellers and also the buyers of houses when we go to sell, when we go to sell the houses. So um, I'm focusing on raising the private money. So, you know, I'm there at the, doing the private lending seminars. I'm doing the, you know, the webinars, the luncheons, and uh, talking to people, going around, uh, networking with people and, and helping them, uh, giving them referrals and they give me referrals. So it's a, it's a win-win proposition. Okay, excellent, excellent. Um, what would you say would be, what would be the best advice that comes to mind for a new real estate investor that's just getting started and, you know, they, they just start, just starting to think, they're just starting to think about getting into real estate investing. Um, what advice comes to mind? The first thing was to get some knowledge, you know, find out about real estate investing and most importantly, get a mentor or get a team to work with because um, going out there alone, thinking it, just by watching TV or having a friend that does it that's going to help you part time, that's not it. You need a full time uh, mentor that's going to hold you accountable and you need a process that you're going to follow. So, gaining knowledge, following the process, and getting to it. You know, a lot of times we, especially in my profession and my wife's profession, um, you know, we're very analytical people. And so, studying and studying and knowing and knowing, you have to get down and do it. You learn more from doing it and get the experience from that. So, that's, that would be my advice. Absolutely. Well, it's good advice. In fact, it's excellent advice. I wish I had been given that advice when I started 15 years ago. <laughs> Same totally. I, I concur. I concur. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, the first year we were in the business, I only did three deals. Okay. Um, and I did it by reading books and my lands, how much more profitable I would have been if I had gotten the knowledge, you know, and, and gotten that foundation. Um, what would you say, Greg, is a, a consistent personal habit that you have that you would think lends to being a part of your success? Mm -hmm. Well, I get up and, and read the Bible every, every morning. And then after that, I really focus on um, what I have to do for that day. So I have these, uh, what I was called, or what's generally called um, magic questions. So I ask myself those magic questions every day. And then I do some, um, some focusing on, you know, I forgot what you call it. <laughs> Sorry about that. You're talking about like uh, maybe affirmations there or? <laughs> Man, exactly. I must have, I must have ESPN. <laughs> I'm reading your mind. <laughs> 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 well, now, now let's see here. Um, of course, I don't know if you heard about the magic question from me or from uh, Crystal, who is also uh, in our group, but um, tell everybody. So that's probably one of your favorite books besides the Bible, right? The magic question. Right, right. That, that helped me out a lot. The magic question, um, I think it's by um, Burt Baggett. Yep. Bart, Bart Baggett. Bart Baggett. <laughs> yeah. And um, it really helped me, especially coming from working full time and the goal is to work the business full time. Um, it helped me really focus and get my mind mentality right. There's so many things going on, but if you have a good mindset, and you actually program your brain to find successes and work towards successes and the success comes. That's what really helps me out. So it's, it's just really a valuable book. And I recommend to anybody who has any goal you know, get the magic question and develop your own personal magic questions and you can move forward. Awesome. Yeah. Um, what I love about the book and I just came across it 
I guess uh, maybe about a year ago. Hmm. And um, what I love about the magic question and the magic questions is what I did is I started taking my goals, which are written down mm -hmm. instead of just focusing on those goals as a statement or reading what it is. Then I just started turning all those goals into magic questions. So let's say, you know, for example, um, let's say that I had a goal to raise oh, $200,000 in the next 90 days in private money. Right. So, instead of, you know, instead of reading that goal, I will, or an affirmation of, I will raise $200,000 by such and such a date. I then say, how will I attract $200,000 in the next 90 days? Right. So it's, you know, it's just amazing when you're asking that question and, um, and you let your subconscious, you know, work on that. It's amazing that the, uh, you know, what the answers are, you know, that you get, you know, when you, when you come back, um, let's see here. Well, let me ask you, Greg, cause I've never asked you, I've never asked you this question. Okay. And that is from your own personal experience. Why would you, why would you encourage people to come to uh, my upcoming live event? You've been to the live event, you know what it's all about. Of course, every, every live event is different, right? But, but you know, generally what this live event is about, uh, what are your big takeaways and why should people come? Um, my big takeaway is it, it's so, well, there's a lot to it. I, actually, I thought about that the other day and I wrote down the acronym. So being a computer scientist, of course, we work in acronyms a lot. <laughs> right. So, so I thought of um, kids, you know, kids. Um, so the K is knowledge. The I is inspiration. The D is determination or, or doing it. And the S is self-improvement. So from each of your, um, we've been to three, I think, of your, your uh, live events, and that's what you gain. And going back and back again and again, you gain so much knowledge, and you can only absorb so much. So going back again, you gain more and more, you refine with your process. And when you go to the, the live event, there's, there's so much inspiration there, because you see people who are ahead of you, they've done things, and you know they've used the system, and it works. And then you also think about yourself, okay, for my inspiration, what do I really want? to gain from this. And it's, you know, money is good, but it's always more about helping people, serving people. That For T and I, that's what resonated with us. So it helps us, uh, it helps our fire develop again and the inspiration to develop and, and really go on focusing on why we're doing this, why we're working full time and starting, um, you know, the real estate investing part time and then switching those uh, entirely. So, you know, the inspiration is there. And then the determination, you know, things happen not the way you want them. So going there, you get refueled, you get determination, you've seen other people being successful. And you, even with what you've done, we're in the process of being successful. You're able to help other people. So that really surprised us for the last uh, live event. You know, people were like, oh, wow, you guys are so great. We're like, really? We're, we're, we're still working on this. <laughs> we're not done yet. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, you know, the determination and just doing it. And then the self-improvement, the books and the, the different, um, you know, mastermind we're in and the platinum. Uh, I know you're going to explain that. It really helps because you, you learn so many things. You learn about the books. You learn about the processes. You learn about ideas from other people, what's worked for them. And the thing is that your program is, is always evolving. It's always evolving. It's always getting better. And you're, you know, you're involved in masterminds yourself and you run masterminds. So the, the information exchange is just incredible. And this is what we love. That's what we love about the live events. And that's why we keep coming back. That's awesome, Greg. Thank you so much. Well, I tell you what, we're about out of time for this show, Greg. So uh, any final or, uh, well, first we got to give them the URL one more time. So everybody get registered for the upcoming uh, live event. And um, let's see here, Greg, are you and Tia going to make this one? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Calendars. <laughs> right. Okay. So it's right around the corner, folks, October 10, 11, and 12. And that's uh, here this fall, 2018. So get right on over to the website at www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. Greg, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show. Thanks, Jay. Thanks for asking me. And All right. Get back too. <laughs> I appreciate it so much. Well, look, uh, it's right around the corner, so I'll be seeing you in a very few uh, short weeks from now uh, at the upcoming live event. 
And uh, so thanks again. Say hello uh, to Tia for me. Certainly will. <laughs> all right. And uh, this is Labor Day weekend. So you all have a fantastic Labor Day weekend, Greg. You too. You too. All right. Thank you so much. All right, everybody. This is until we see you on the next show. Until we see you on the next show, here's to taking your business to the next level. See you at the upcoming live event. Bye for now.